husband and I have been fighting a lot lately for the first time in our marriage. I know he's trying to help me, but he just doesn't understand what's happening to me. He wants me to be the way I used to be, but I, I don't feel any happiness or hope. John is gone for 12 hours every day, and I'm so lonely. And the worst thing is when people tell you how lucky you are when you know that all that matters is to be healthy. Hello, my name is Sue. I, I, I really hope you can help me. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I'm so anxious. I, I feel like I'm going crazy. Uh, it all started when I had my second baby. Um, I've, been, I've been trying to get some help for weeks, but everyone see, seems to say something different. And uh, I mean, someone even told me to go on a holiday, but I know it's not going to fix it. Uh, do you think I can see someone today? Um, not too far from your place, yeah. Oh, oh great. Okay, I'll, I'll see you then. Okay, bye-bye. Postpartum depression affects not only women, but entire families. It is important then that husbands, partners, and family members be aware of what to look for and how to help. Too often, the symptoms of this condition are either ignored or overlooked. When this happens, the level of stress in families remains high and the process of healing is unfortunately delayed. Research and public education are vitally important so that we may begin as a society to confront postpartum depression. For too long, women and their families have suffered in a web of shame and confusion. Well, my postpartum depression started pretty well on the delivery table. My anxiety level was so high I had panic attacks and racing thoughts almost right away. And I was so afraid to be alone with the baby. And I became especially upset whenever the baby started to cry. Altogether, those feelings lasted for about seven or eight months until things started to get better. I suffered so much during that period. Thank goodness it's over now. Parenting is the most important role that any of us will ever assume. And yet those of us who have children know that there is little to prepare us for the unique challenges that parenting brings. Throughout pregnancy, most couples eagerly await the birth of their children. And yet many people are soon overwhelmed by the demands of the early postpartum period. The physical changes in the mother, the cries of a newborn baby, a house turned upside down. These are only a few of the many adjustments that a new family faces. For most of us, when we think of pregnancy and childbirth, we form images in our minds of happy new families, cute babies, and stuffed teddy bears. But for many new families, postpartum disorders will shatter this illusion. There are three main types of depression that women are known to suffer from postnatally. The baby blues, postpartum depression, and postpartum psychosis. The most common of these is the baby blues. 75 to 85 percent of all new mothers suffer from some form of short-term depression or weepiness during the first several days after childbirth. At the other end of the spectrum, a very small number of new mums will develop a form of postpartum psychosis. These women may experience hallucinations or other confused states, often requiring hospitalization. Well, I know I was really nervous 
as a new mother, um, especially when the baby cried. And uh, I, can, I can remember times when I would be rocking her and my tears would be falling all over her face. And uh, by the time she was seven weeks old, it seemed like I was crying all the time. I just didn't know what was wrong with me. And nobody could really seem to help me at first. I went to a, a family doctor that, that finally told me that I had a postpartum depression. And uh, she, was, she was very caring and she cared about the fact that, that I just wasn't myself and nothing seemed to be right and I was starting to have scary thoughts about hurting myself and she was afraid of myself of being dangerous to myself that I might hurt myself and um, she called a, a doctor at the hospital and they recommend that I should go into the psychiatric ward and that was very hard I was confused. I didn't really understand if I had a psychiatric illness or if it was a depression. But eventually I got a, a doctor that really cared. And it, it took a long time to get better. Lots of medication and counseling. And it's been a year now. Um, but things are looking better and I'm feeling so much better. When this happens, you find yourself in a situation where you have to take full control of everything. You are the, you become the primary caregiver for the baby. Plus, you're also looking after your wife, who is very ill at the time, or can be. It's a role that any man is capable of doing. You just have to put yourself into it and, and do the best you can. Your wife needs your help, and you're the only one there that can really help her. The focus of this video will be the third type of postnatal disorder, postpartum depression. It is estimated that one in every eight new families will be affected by this debilitating yet little understood condition. Women with postpartum depression are our sisters, our neighbors, and our friends. Yet the symptoms and causes vary so greatly that it is often difficult to detect. All that is known for sure is that this condition can affect any woman, and each woman will experience it differently. I had your phone number, I, I guess I got it a few weeks ago from the public health nurse, yeah. and um, I I just lost my nerve. I uh, it was it was really hard, but I felt so awful this morning that I just knew I had to do something. So I phoned you. And how many children do you have actually? I have uh, two. Mm -hmm. um, I had no trouble after my first baby. She's three now. Mm -hmm. um, so I th thought this the second after having the second one I'd be the same. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't. I really don't know what's wrong with me. Do you want to tell me a little bit more about what's been going on? Okay. Um, I have a um, hard time sleeping. I'm exhausted all the time. And I, th I think they're called panic attacks. I get all of a sudden out of nowhere, um, for no reason, I all of a sudden panic and get dizzy and I have heart palpitations. You have trouble breathing? Um, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, like hyperventilating mm -hmm. and, and I have to just try to calm myself down and uh, uh, it's really scary. I'm sure it must be terrifying. Yeah. Have you um, gone to see anybody else or talked to anybody else about uh, what you've been experiencing? Yeah, I talked to my doctor and he assured me it wasn't a heart attack and um, I talked to my pediatrician and I was taking iron supplements. Mm -hmm. Thought I'd get more energy. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I'm, tell you the truth, I'm really embarrassed about this because um, I'm such a strong person. I like mm -hmm. to. This isn't to your fix usual my, self. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I um, I like to solve my own problems, and it's really hard for me to ask for help. 
Postpartum depression robs women of their sense of control over their lives. It is common for women to say that they feel differently than they used to. They often feel guilty and inadequate. They may even feel that they have failed, failed their babies, their partners, and themselves. Postpartum depression has been a recognized disorder for thousands of years. Research indicates that it continues to strike women of all classes and cultures. And yet it is still difficult for families to find help for this disorder. Perhaps one of the reasons for this is that no one cause or cure has yet been determined for this condition. The causes of postpartum depression really aren't known at this point. There are a number of theories which fall into about three different categories. The biological ones, psychological theories, and social theories. We're probably going to find out someday that more than one factor is related to the cause of postpartum depression and that causes differ from woman to woman. Although we don't know the cause, we do know that there are a number of risk factors that appear to affect the development of postpartum depression. For example, if a woman has had a number of stressful life events around the time of her delivery, for example, financial problems, um, moving, losing a parent, or having a baby that's unwell or has a difficult temperament. Another important factor is if the woman is not receiving enough social support, for example, from her husband. A third factor that's a little bit more controversial is that some women have, may have had a history of depression in the past. Although we know that these factors are associated with depression, um, we still find it very hard to predict which woman will become depressed after her baby is born. I was in the middle of a horrible cast of the battle with my ex-husband. I was constantly worried about how my other child was being affected. The court fight and divorce were so bitter. During the same year, I got remarried and we decided to move to another town to get a new start. It was so hard for me to adjust. Money was tight and I missed my old friends and neighbors. I felt like I had no one to talk to. And of course it didn't help that almost all my family is back home. I was so isolated from everyone. And during all of this my baby was born. And you know, I knew almost right away that something was wrong with me. I just couldn't cope anymore. And I was diagnosed with postpartum depression. Looking back now, it's no wonder I felt so awful. It was all just too much for me to handle. They have lots of um, things that they suggest. Uh, I have a lot of reading material that I think we should both read. Mm -hmm. And there is a support group um, that um, <laughs> I just I'm happy. And I cry when I'm happy. Mm -hmm. And um, I uh, I think they I think they meet every week, once a week. Mm -hmm. So if I can set aside one night to do that, that would be great. Sure, of course. Um, I think it's Wednesdays, so well, it's much that's better okay. to have some idea of what's going on. I'm so uh, confused there yeah. for so long. Yeah, it's great. I mean, everybody was telling me something different, and now I, I really, I really feel that this is, this is the right thing. This is the right answer. So Claire was good today. Well, was she? Yeah. Was she did? Well, she went to Baba. So thank goodness for Baba. I couldn't do without her. Um, yeah, I I phoned 
the center and got an appointment right away, which is great. And phoned Baba, and she uh, she said that would be fine. But uh, I think getting back to what we have to do, I think we have to talk more. I, I know I've been hiding some of my feelings. Well, you gotta let me know how you and, feel. And um, right, well, I, I didn't I I didn't want to hurt you anymore. I knew we were going through a terrible thing, and and. Um, but I think now that I have some hope, and I think hopefully you'll have hope too, that this is going to be over. Well, the and biggest thing is that we know what's forever. going on now. Exactly. Before it was so difficult, I know. Being a mother myself and finding the time after the births of each of my children really pretty stressful, I've really spent a lot of time thinking about the so-called myths of motherhood. I think that when women become mothers, they're under a great deal of pressure some of this pressure is imposed on them by others but some of it also comes from within they have to make a lot of adjustments to different changes their body has changed their relationship with their husband and their parents and as well their responsibilities are different and greater as well there is a change in the way that society looks at the woman and she has to deal with that women are expected to make these changes almost instantly and to not feel any sort of confusion or conflict about what's going on and when they do they start to feel guilty and to blame themselves instead of recognizing that it's simply a very stressful time it's been very difficult i've uh, really wanted it many times to tell my wife to snap out of it to, to really let's try to get back to where we were the, we had such a good life for you know a couple of years and and now it's um, it's very, very difficult, but I think that now we see that we've got some sort of an end in sight. We can see a resolution to it, and um, it's, it's, it's been very difficult, and we really wonder why is this happening to us? Is it ever going to end? But I think that uh, now we have a lot of hope because we know uh, what's going on, we know what's happening, and uh, I think we can work our way through it now, and I just have to try to be strong to help. Helps my wife as much as I can. You can really see that in our society there's a lack of attention to these issues around mothering. For example, in prenatal classes we really talk a lot about the physical things that happen when a woman has a baby but we spend almost no time dealing with the uh, social changes and the psychological changes that are going on. As well, in our culture, unlike some other societies, we really don't have any special rituals in order to help women when they come home from the hospital, both to help them and their family adjust to the addition to their family. You can imagine when you look at these pressures that are on a woman to be perfect and to be really, you know, this uh, ideal mother, how guilty she must feel and how much she must blame herself if she does become depressed after the birth of her child. At first, parenthood wasn't what we expected. I wasn't very surprised when my wife became depressed. Nobody had told us about the changes that would take place in our lives. We had to learn to let go. I was really happy when the center called and asked if I would come and visit you. I remember when I had my postpartum depression, it was the worst, worst period in my life. And it felt like it would never end. It just went on and on and on. So I know how you feel. Well, I can't compare it to any other time in my life. Um, it's just really good to talk to someone and have someone listen and, and understand what I'm going through because you went through the same thing as yeah. me. So, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's great. So many people have told me that it's all in my head that, I mean, that's really scary. Yeah, I know what you mean. And it, for me, it didn't help that I felt like I was less of a person because I had some just become a mother mm -hmm. and that my status wasn't the same as it was, my opinions didn't count. It was really frustrating for me. But I want you to know there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I'm feeling a lot better now and you're going to feel a lot better. Maybe even get to the point where you can start volunteering and talking to other women as well. So just hang in there. Women with postpartum depression must be given the message that their depression is not their fault. Too often, these women feel that they themselves are the cause of the problem. Yet postpartum depression is real, and there is help available. What does help will vary greatly with each individual, so people must be persistent in their efforts to find support. You know, 
I met with Sue today and uh, sitting down and talking to her really made me think about the way I was when I had my postpartum depression and what we went through and you know how I shut myself up and I was so isolated from you and from everybody else and uh, I just wanted to say that since then you know I'm feeling a lot better and uh, I'm glad that everything has been working out okay for Victoria's sake and our sake and your sake and um, I feel good about that. I'm glad to hear that because it's been uh, a learning experience for both of us and I'm glad I was able to help you get through it. I know there were some really rough times that we had and I know. Uh, it worked out really well and I'm glad you're feeling a lot better. And I want to say thank you for um, hanging in with me through all the yucky things and all the trying times and I know you were really confused and frustrated with me a lot of the times. I was confused and frustrated but I think that kind of made us stronger that we went through that and understood it together. Many women are not identified as having postpartum depression and therefore do not receive treatment. Fortunately, most of those women get better on their own. However, in some instances, the women really still aren't feeling well by the time of their child's first birthday. Therefore, it's very important both to identify and to treat this condition. The type of treatment will depend on the severity of the symptoms and the amount of support that the woman has. If she has mild symptoms and strong supports, then she may start to feel better very quickly with some, some education and attendance at a postpartum support group. If her symptoms seem to be worsening or to persist even with initial diagnosis, then it's important for her to see her family doctor. The family doctor can provide education and support and may also recommend psychotherapy and treatment with antidepressant medication. It's really important to remember that postpartum depression is both common and readily treated. However, just as there is no one cause or associated risk factor, nor is there one cure. I think I wish more than anything I would have known what postpartum depression was before I got it. I tried doing the normal things, um, getting my hair cut, going out with my friends, doing things that I used to enjoy. That didn't seem to help. I finally um, did some investigating and found a group of women who were feeling the same way I was feeling. It made me feel a lot better knowing that I wasn't the only one. There were, were other people who were feeling the same way I was. Well, the support group has helped me so much. I think it's been one of the best things for me, you know, coming and meeting everybody. At first, it was hard opening up the strangers. You know, I didn't know any of the girls either. And uh, it was a social worker at the hospital that told me about the group. And it was hard because I, I was in the hospital and I was afraid that they would think that I was crazy or something. But uh, they've all been great to me, they've been really good. And they've taught me that it's okay to cry and I did, I did a lot of crying at the beginning. Healthcare people should include men as part of the equation in, in, in the recovery process. Uh, men are able to, to help in, in getting getting uh, back to normal uh, it takes some time but uh, they can be involved and quite often want to be involved it's a, it's a family issue and should be handled that way yeah I guess I guess one of the most difficult things for me was to give up my need for control uh, it's when I started to do that that things started to get a lot better you know, I'm a good actress and I hid my depression for about five weeks and then I started to realize that I could reach out for help and when I started to do that, that's when things really started to get better. And I realized I could share things with other people and, and I could ask for help from other people and that's, um, that's really when things started to look up for me. It was really amazing that uh, we, we really went to every prenatal class. Uh, we didn't miss any and we found that uh, I mean, they really didn't talk at all about postpartum depression, not even once. And uh, it's so much easier when you have some idea what to expect and what's going on. That's one of the was one of the biggest problems, and really, it, you know, feels feels good that we've gotten through this far, and we think we can make it through the end of the tunnel at this point. So it's it's coming along. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of removing the guilt and the related stress from a woman. I know my wife 
had this burden on her shoulders that she thought she was dragging us down, when in fact she was the one who was suffering all of the pain. Once she came to realize that she wasn't a burden to us, uh, and with the help of the health center, she was able to make vast improvements in her outlook. I think that uh, it's really important to just try to make life as easy, um, try to get as many breaks as possible, not to have too much stress, and look for people that are understanding and will give you lots of support. And try to stay away from the negative things. Uh, the negative people, negative situations, people that you think might stress you out. Um, just try to make life easier for yourself. Thank you.